Good morning and welcome back to the second uh, day of the Turin Islamic Economic Forum. I would like to thank the partners, uh, Turin Municipal Municipality, Chamber of Commerce, University and ASAIF. We are supported by Fondazione CRT, uh, sponsor IREN and Turismo Torino from the point of view organization and then Dinner Standard. Uh, gate, um, gateway to, and uh, um, in this first panel today we are going to talk about something which is very important nowadays which is golden visa and investment in new technologies very update the Italian Vice Minister of Economic Development will be speaking also during this session. We will give him the floor, Gilberto Pichetto Fratini, as soon as the connection is up. Apart from Alberto Brugnone, today we will see Andrea Ganelli, leading law, Fiorella Altruda, President of University of Torino Incubator, and Professor Giuseppe Scellato, President of... Polytechnic of Torino Incubator. Alberto, which are the investments which can be of interest to the Middle Eastern world or more in general the Islamic world? Good morning, Paolo, and thank you, everybody. I would like to thank everybody for the second day of TF. If we are, since we are talking about incubator and syntech, we must tell the difference, draw the line between uh, the, we must identify the Islamic finance point of view, talking about these instruments. I would like, uh, if you can please show my slide. Thank you. So this slide shows the current situation of the Islamic fintech ecosystem, as you can see, within the Islamic finance, fintech is a game changer, something which has drawn all the think tanks. Yesterday, we, we heard Moody's chief strategist, and in his presentation was very interesting. He talked about fintech and the investment behind these uh, Islamic fintech researches. He, he highlighted uh, uh, these uh, researches as something which can be a game changer in the Islamic finance. So because investment in the in Islamic finance, I mean, we know the rules and the no intermediation through interest rate and the rest. So they have an underlying rule, which is the peer-to-peer -peer approach. <laughs> so the intermediary, the broker, must not be involved. And there must be a direct uh, relationship between the investor and the, uh, those who get the investment. So here you can see that out of 93 Islamic fintech startups globally, 65, which means two-thirds, focus on peer-to-peer -peer finance. So this chance of creating a network, a sort of web, uh, which highlights the word, the term financial democracy, in which this term is becomes real. Then you have another game changer, this act, this trap, disruptive element, which is represented by the zakat management. We talked about the 2% zakat tax, let's say, which is a very important fund resources, zero cost fund resources resource. So this is a portion of the Islamic fintech point of view, let's say. But if we talk about from the point of view 
of the startup. And if you talk about artificial intelligence and biotech, what I always say is that the risk is agnostic. And whenever you, whenever you talk about conventional or, or Islamic finance, a risk remains a risk. So talking about the biotech or in artificial intelligence, the investigation, the field of investigation is as such. However, there are some questions that may be made during the whole approach. If we start talking about uh, the management of uh, fetuses, uh, birth rates, and if we talk about artificial intelligence that can totally replace human beings in many activities, which, however, on, from the Islamic point of view, should be managed by a person, a human being, a human heart, and a human brain. So a lot of ethical questions crop up. The same questions which are indeed highlighted by the Vatican as well, and also by the Catholic think tanks. Think tanks. Therefore, the investigation fields in the investigation are the very same, but uh, uh, what actually, during the research, what actually could, the results or what the feedback that could come out of this research, result from this research is are a different uh, story. And uh, there will, if we can talk about, I mean, Fiorella Trudo, for example, will talk about the difference between a Sharia compliant, uh, in, uh, intelligent, artificial intelligence, uh, and biotech, and uh, the, and uh, let's say what we have here. And we will have a presentation in this sense. So uh, now I would like to stop my introduction because I know that there are going to be some contribution which refer to actual to focus on Turin, and then I can come to some conclusion later on. Thank you, Alberto. And I would like Mr. Andrea Ganelli, leading law, notary public, to take the floor. And he will be talking about golden visa and opportunities for Italian companies to, let's say, intercept financial resources from uh, basically the world over, not only from the Islamic countries. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I hope uh, you uh, you're, can hear me. And thank you very much for uh, your invitation. I'll try and share my slides. Bear with me. So we have a chance here given by the so-called golden visa for potential investors. And this opportunity, in my opinion, is a very is a concrete opportunity which is worth digging in detail. I thank the organizer who decided to involve me and my subject matters. And uh, thank you for also putting me side by side with the president of the University of Torino, the Politecnico Torino, because the Golden Visa, with reference to, Ita to the startups, incubators, and Italian, uh, let's say, concerns, can represent an efficient uh, core of activity for us. The Golden Visa, as you say, is a visa which allows uh, for those who obtain it from the Italian state to enter fr freely and in a steady way to enter Italy. Not only this, and since Italy is part of the European Union, having a golden visa, being granted a golden visa in Italy allows uh, the retainer to freely move within the European Union. The golden visa is also called investor visa. 
and uh, allows to enter the whole Schengen area, and it allows uh, these opportunities to those who are, can invest in our country. With reference to specific resources, in the past few years, the possibility offered by Golden Visa is getting more and more efficient and uh, effective, in my opinion, thanks to the latest um, regulation modifications, which have reduced a number of amounts, making Italian's Italian solution more competitive vis-a-vis -vis other countries in the European Union. According to the uh, laws in force, you should first invest in an Italian capital company, a sum which must be at least 500,000 euros. And so this is something, uh, and it, there is a possibility, therefore, to invest in an innovative startup, a smaller sum. Um, not, I'm talking about 500,000 euros, but at least 250,000 euros. So these are the amounts that allow a business enterprise to work. And these, among, from the point of view of the Islamic finance, I think this is basically one or the sole feasible opportunity. Alternatives are, the other opportunities are a golden visa through a donation to a philanthropic association amounting to at least 1 million euros. We are talking about charity. It's not an investment, but it is a free donation. Or else you can invest in Italian government bonds, uh, the amount of at least 2 million euros. And apart from this is a purely financial investment, however, we all know that uh, Italian government bonds uh, have uh, uh, almost a negative uh, or zero return. So, so to recap, we have one side, the investor will be able to have uh, access residence in Italy and freely move within the Schengen area. The investor will have been, will be able to invest, of course, in a risk op operation which uh, provides for risk because, of course, as you were said, you said beforehand, I mean, risk is a risk and it is in any case equity investment, but anyway, within an Italian contest, context uh, where we have also specific guarantees as, as far as equity is concerned. There is no obligation to work in Italy or manage something in Italy, of company in Italy, and there is no obligation uh, to be tested as to the one's knowledge of the Italian language, which is something that usually is a, a requirement for those who apply for the Italian residence or citizenship. And, uh, and Italy can become an access door to Europe and, uh, and uh, to the system of the other European Union countries, uh, members. Uh, talking about the Schengen area. So now, uh, once we have, having described, uh, briefly described the features of the golden visa benefits, let's say, we can also wonder why choose Italy for the golden visa. On the one side, because Italy has lowered the amount of necessary money to be invested, the amount to be invested. On the other side, uh, since because Italy has a great hope to overcome the pandemic crisis, and this can become uh, an opportunity for Italy for an economic rebirth, a large investment, so a possible investor can become part of an economic system which is being relaunched and surely is going to grow. And in, uh, with the specific reference also to the startup, innovative startup market, which is particularly active in Italy, investment-wise as well, here you can see also I mean, we have talked about, we are talking about the technologic aspects since we are talking about Polytechnic and also University of Studies in Turin. So 
in, to the end, Milan anyway, uh, we, I must say that also the investment in innovative uh, startup, investment, innovative startup image as a lower floor, but at the same time brings with itself a number of uh, tax benefits for the investor according to the investment made. So on the other side, we have Article 24B of the TUIR on income tax, which provides for a, ta for a tax benefit as well, as you can see from the slide. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank, I thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Andrea, for your contribution. I just would like to give the floor to Professor Fiorella Altruda so that she can uh, may also present briefly present the activities of University of Torino Incubator. Fiorella, the floor to you. Can you just keep within the five minutes allotted? Thank you, Paolo. I would like to thank Paolo Biancon and the organizers for allowing us to present our activities. Unit3T is the company that promotes and manages technology, transfer of technology and business development by giving value to scientific researches of university researchers, facilitating also the business skills of the researchers themselves. Uh, sorry, we would like to share the slides, but we have some small issues, right? are having some more issues right now. Well, uh, you may also tell us directly in what is shown on the slides. Lo mandano dalla regia, quindi se they will send you the slide they will send the slide in place of you directly. Here is your presentation. Golden Visa and investment in new technology. Uh, Fiorella, we have the slides on the screen. You should see the slides on your monitor. Well, I mean, uh, we will be showing the slides. Can you please tell uh, the speakers to just move on with the slides and send the next one? Well, the second slide, please. Okay. So, in this slide, you can see that 35 percent, that is to say most, of the technology transfer and business management is uh, sciences, but 2Y3T also deals with digital uh, agriculture, food, uh, agricultural and agriculture, but on the number of the startups which have been launched, and 2Y3T started its activity in um, 2006. So out of 96 startups, 51 are uh, currently being incubated have uh, completed it and 30 are still and they have and they're still being incubated 30 have completed the incubation phase so satisfactory result mainly addressed to the University of Torino and its researchers we have a large amount of researchers 
who uh, are facilitated in a way towards creating businesses. The territory texture is very rich in Torino. Uh, only we can uh, we have uh, 230,000 businesses through the researchers know-how um, we uh, facilitated by 2i3t uh, activity ne next slide we can um, in cui have results um, which researchers can see the transfer of their activities, of their designs, and through 2i3t, they can also have uh, areas within the molecular biotech uh, centers. Can I have the next slide, please? No, no, Okay. The molecular center, the molecular technology center, is where many uh, technology are applied and started from. So they use uh, forefront technologies, in particular in generative medicine. We have had results that have been facilitated by this activity with a large multinational company, which is Unisight, and which is currently supporting the technology transfer technology. Uh, of researchers. So another sector that the un uh, University of Turin has developed, it's called the butterfly area, and it deals with agrofood. Our partner with Silvano Fumero is a company that is present over the Piedmontese territory, not far from Turin, with whom the university has created a network. It is a scientific park where there are companies and the it represents the next step as to the 2i3t activity. And this, this park is aimed at making companies develop. A very good example is 38 that has been purchased by Novartis for $9 billion, and that has been listed at the NASDAQ. So over the territory, we have a very important network as far as enterprise making is, starting from research, we have the university, we have the Molecular Biotechnology Center with 2i3t, which leads towards the entrepreneurship characters and develops this kind of characteristic. And then we have the bio industry where companies can further develop and so it is a territory that fosters this kind of activity. And as you can see from the slide, in Turin, all this is conceived as a nexus, as a lever. So with the health park, Parco della Salute, the polyclinic, which is very close to the activity, both to the uh, 2i3d and the biotechnology center. Thank you very much, Fiorella, for this presentation. The slides are available, will be made available in our website, and therefore, participants will be able to see them later. I will give the floor to Professor Cellato for a short presentation and will kindly ask him to stick within five minutes' time, always talking about the Polytechnic Incubator. Thank you very much. I will be using slides. I hope you can see them. Yes, we can see them perfectly. 
So first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I will be using my five minutes for the presentation of I3P, and I will make a couple of remarks on cross-border investments. Uh, bearing in mind the theme of the event. So the 3IP that was funded in 1999 is one of the long lasting activities of this kind over the Italian territory. And it is uh, aimed at, uh, it was conceived in order to support uh, the local businesses with a collaboration strategy. What does it mean that we accept in our incubation uh, path both uh, spin offs that uh, directly come from uh, uh, the polytechnic laboratories, but also in more recent years? a number of uh, entrepreneurial projects that are set up over the territory or that decide to settle locally in order to create partnerships with research centers and research groups related to the Polytechnic of Turin in many technological and scientific areas. So the uh, value creation process for these new uh, businesses is based on the activation of collaborations between uh, startups uh, with uh, um, industrial and financial players. One of our objective is to support their value. So as you can see, in Doha, in Qatar 2019, uh, I3P will select this as one of the best public business incubators. So the activities, of course, we cover a, a quite large range going from scouting to direct and indirect mentoring and consultancy. And this matchmaking that is very important with industrial partners and also with the market. We also have a, a development to technological support of startups. And then we have fundraising. So in recent years, we have also added a specific area on innovation in order to try and foster relationships with large enterprises and startups. In particular, we offer research uh, we offer scouting services for startups, for large businesses, and then we activate soft concepts for the adaptation of the technological offer of startups as to the large uh, clients, so the large businesses. I will provide you with some figures in order to make you understand how our process works. In a year that was very peculiar, so 2020 was the year of the COVID, we know it, we received an, about 900 ideas that turned into 99 projects, and 51 new companies have been set up. Uh, we know that the path, the journey is quite selective, so out of these 51 companies, uh, about 20, 19 companies entered a new incubated company. So uh, some are coming from the outside, created over the market in, uh, in over this market. We have set up 300 companies. So what is the sector? What are the sectors? So this is the portfolio. You see about 20% of companies work in industrial sector, the IT and digital sector, including artificial intelligence services, makes for 41%. And then there is an area called area and sustainability where we are following growth. One of the most important remarks, so both to support the work of the incubator in order to understand how things are going in the segment of finance for startups, is the fundraising area. This year, we registered an important growth with an increase in, in supported project for about 30 million euros, with post management of about 50 million euros. So you should understand that these are uh, investments of diverse origin. We work with business angels. We work with investment funds, typical listed 
because these are startups at the beginning of their mm, career and also with, with industrial partners. So I will get inspiration from this slide. So how the golden visa is important because what we do is we, we, we were experiencing some difficulties in attracting investments that are cross-borders from other uh, companies from other countries, and especially this is related to the presence of a lack of information or asymmetries, and some prefer to stay within the local market for better control of their projects and their interests. We have, uh, over the past one and a half year, we have recorded some non-Italian venture capitals, so interest in intervening over our portfolio, and especially over larger investment rounds that in technical jargon are called big rounds, so with a higher profile. In terms of orientation of our portfolio in the years to come, we are expecting important growth also in the Euros, in the space sector. That's a very important trend with the, with the collaboration of the European Space Agency with an incubator center that will be uh, located in Turin with the partners from the industry sector. And this will be related to space economy. So we have upstream projects with uh, telecommunication, satellite communication, and everything uh, in orbit, but also related to the downstream world with application going from uh, um, precision machining and the financial segment, insurance segment, and transport. So that's the, the space economy is an important business. So we are expecting for new companies entering these to be potential targets also for foreign investors. I believe I have fully used my five minutes time, but I would like before concluding to underline the fact that we have several diverse projects under our label. We're supporting academic spin-offs. Here you can see some from the medical sector to cybersecurity and environmental monitoring, but we also have entrepreneurial ventures from the local economic system. And they span from energy to medical sector to aerospace. Uh, such as the case of ECHO. So here we have other two uh, models. On the one hand, we have the industrial spin-offs coming f sometimes from uh, large or medium enterprises deciding to bring forth their innovation projects, activating new businesses. And we support them through this activity. And last but not least, uh, there are some startups that have decided to set up locally because they were looking for highly skilled capitals with lower costs compared to the ones uh, existing in several areas in the world. So Tyvac, a satellite world from the USA, Evo, they do artificial intelligence project concerning market demand, and they are an internationalized business coming from the UK. So having said that, I will conclude. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, the audio of the speaker is not coming through. 
So this should all compatible with the thresholds, the financial threshold. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. A question from Alberto Brugnoli. So thank you very much, Giuseppe. As I'm not from Turin, I did not know this activity of yours. Uh, I would like to underline that there are in Sharia compliant investment funds financing some of these activities. Now, I will uh, analyze uh, your presentation a little bit more in detail, and maybe through Paolo, we will keep in touch because in the Gulf, uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Qatar, and now Saudi Arabia, there are funds, investment funds that target uh, exactly what you have presented. So thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thanks a lot. OK, we're concluding this session. And the next one will be session eight related to funding the public structures and the recovery and resilient plan. Thank you. And see you later.